Well, hello everyone. Um, as you can see, I've actually made it outside for a change. I'm out of the office and I thought I would do a little video showing you uh, the settings on my camera and how I set my camera up. I'm always getting asked by people how I set my camera up, what settings I use. Actually, no, that's a lie. I don't think I've ever been asked that question, but I thought it would make a good video anyway. So this is my Olympus EM1 Mark II, and uh, I'm just gonna go through some of the dials and what I've set them up and what settings I've put them on. Um, now this isn't an Olympus specific video. Um, I've actually done one of those and I'll, I'll tell you a bit about that later on. So these are very generic settings that will cover any camera that can be tailored, uh, but it may be useful for you to, uh, to see how I've set this up and maybe you can borrow the, some of those to use on your own camera. So let's get into this. So the first setting I have is the button on the back of the camera where my thumb rests and I use that for back button focus. Now if you don't know what that is then let me explain. Um, usually you have the shutter button which uh, not only uh, focuses the camera but also locks the exposure for when you take the picture. Now it's best to have that separated because where you want to focus is not always where you want to take a meter reading and vice versa. So you can separate those by having the uh, exposure done with the shutter button as usual, but using a different button to actually focus. So that's the button I use on the back of the camera where my thumb rests. So my camera is actually set to manual focus at all times until I press that button. And that's really useful too. So I can press that button, get the autofocus going and lock it on a subject, take my hand off or my thumb off the, uh, the button and that's the focus locked but then I can fine tune it with the focus ring on the lens if I want to fine tune that focus I can do that separately because it's in manual focus so that's the first button back button focus oh and on my pen f um, as you would have seen in my video that I did in Leeds I don't actually have a button on the back where my thumb rests so I actually use front button focus there's a button on the front where my finger rests and I use that to focus the camera with instead same principle though. Well, next up is the record button. And that's what I love about these mirrorless cameras. The fact that you can change the setting, the default setting for any of the buttons to pretty much what setting you want, whichever works for you. So I actually have this set up for the format to change the format on the camera. And as you probably know, I love shooting in square format. So I want to, quick and easy way to get from rectangle, the 4x3 default on this camera, into a square format for when I see a, a scene or a subject that suits the square format. So I use that button to change the format to quickly change between different formats, rectangle or a square. <laughs> Now the buttons on the front of the camera, just by the lens here, are quite interesting. Uh, there's two buttons here. One I have for focus peaking. So that means when you're on manual focus, you can press that button and you get a coloured lines appearing around the subject and that shows when the subject's in or out of focus. The lines appear and start shining when you're in focus. The other button is a depth of field preview button. And this is something, again, I love using on the mirrorless camera. On an SLR, um, the viewfinder used to go dark when the depth of field preview button was pressed it would shut the uh, the camera would shut the aperture down to the shooting aperture you chose f8 to f11 but it would mean that the viewfinder would just go quite dark and it was very hard to see um, whether the uh, the whole scene was in focus at that aperture which is what the depth of field preview button is intended to uh, show but now you have mirrorless and you have uh, the screens on the back of the camera uh, the screen doesn't go so dark, so it's much easier to see uh, how much of the scene is in focus when you press that button. So I use this button a bit like I used to use my shift lens, my tilt shift lens on my Canon 5D full frame camera. Well, on that lens, I used to focus on the background and then use the tilt function on the lens to bring the foreground into focus at very wide apertures. But now instead, I focus on the foreground as I normally would, 
but I sh <laughs> This is meant to be a quiet place. I've got trains, I've got jets. I've got flies in my hair. Do you hear that? So what I do now is that I focus on the foreground, just as I normally would, but then I press the depth of field button to check the background, and then I start closing down the aperture until that background comes into focus. So I don't necessarily need to know what aperture I'm using. As soon as I see the background come into focus with the depth of field button depressed, then I know I've got front to back sharpness. So if you've got depth of field preview option on your camera, use it. Now the next button on my camera, it kind of ties in with that, and that's my shoulder button, FN1 on this camera, and that's my zoom focus. Now the other advantage with all digital cameras now is that you can use the LCD screen to zoom in to the scene, five or seven times and then you can fine tune your focus. So that's what I do when I'm manually focusing when the camera's on a tripod. That button's just there just by my thumb once again and I press that it zooms in around seven times magnification and get the uh, focus exactly right and then zoom back out again to compose the image. So that's what that button there does. I call you up in the middle of the night Been bothered by dreams ain't feeling all right now there's a second button on top of the camera, the one next to the record button, the one I use to change the format, and that's marked FN2 on this camera, and that's the one I use to change the white balance or the ISO. Now I don't actually change the white balance, so I have that permanently set on the sunny setting. If I had it set on auto white balance, the camera would be constantly changing the white balance as it measures the scene. And I don't want the camera to do that. Even though it won't affect my raw files, I don't want the camera changing things without me knowing basically. So I have it set on the sunny setting and that allows me to see the scene on the back of the camera on the LCD just as it is, just as it should be with the, not the naked eye, but as the camera sees it. I want to see any changes in the light. So I want to see the light getting cooler. I want to see the light getting warmer. And I may go with that in the final result when I post process the image, but I don't want the camera changing that. I want to see that result. So I leave the camera permanently in the sunny white balance setting. So the other setting on there is the ISO. Now, obviously I do want to change that. So that's a, a quick way of getting to the ISO setting without having to go into the menu, a quick press of my index finger, and then I can dial the, the uh, dial on the back of the camera to flick between the ISO as I want to increase or decrease it. Right, well next up, I've got a tree growing out of my head there, haven't I? Next up, um, we've got two custom functions on the main exposure dial. Um, this is something that's new to the EM1 Mark II. They didn't have these on the Mark I. And uh, there's three of them on here, and uh, I've started using those and setting the camera up exactly as I want. So, my default then for doing my landscapes is C1, Custom 1. So that one is my landscape mode. So on that one, I have the uh, ISO set to its base 200. I have image stabilizing switched off because the camera will be on a tripod. I have the self timer set to two seconds. So I don't always have to use a cable release. I have the aperture set to F8, which is my default uh, aperture choice. And then of course, it's also in manual focus as usual. So I can quickly manual focus and then it's not gonna change if I move the camera around. The camera's not gonna refocus on a different area of the scene. So that's my landscape mode. Next up, I have C2, and this is my long exposures mode. So slight difference to the landscape one, I have it set to the lowest ISO, which on this camera is now 64. The image stabilizing again is switched off. But I don't have a self timer on this one because uh, when I'm doing long exposures, I tend to use the uh, a, a cable release. I, I made the effort to put a, a cable release in for that, so I don't have a self timer. 
Um, it's in fully manual exposure this time rather than aperture priority because I want to uh, set the um, shutter speed or have it in the live bulb mode you have on this camera but it's basically having it in a, a bulb mode and therefore I set the aperture to go with that so it's completely manual it's timed exposure I'm not letting the camera do the exposure for me and again the camera's in manual focus because I will have a dark ND filter over the lens and I don't want the camera trying to auto focus with that um, dark filter in place because you get confused poor thing now there's one other button I use um, and have set up and that's the one by the viewfinder here. This is the one you'd usually have to switch between live view and the viewfinder view if you don't have eye detection switched on um, or switch between uh, live view and the menu on the LCD screen. Now I've got this um, set up for switching the image stabilizing on or off because it's a menu based system it's not on the lens there's no switch on the lens that enables me to switch that on and off very easily if I need to now there is one other button on this camera which I could use to put my own setting in and it's this one on the lens called LFN um, this one is specific to this zoom lens and that's the reason I don't put it to anything because I sometimes shoot with my zooms, this one, and I sometimes shoot with primes. The prime lenses don't have that button. So if I was used to having an option on that button and then I swapped over to my primes, it wouldn't be there. It kind of confuses things. The other reason is because, well, it's just too many. Um, because you can customise all these buttons, that's brilliant, but you have got to remember what you've customised them to. And that extra button there is just one too many to remember. The fact that I haven't got it on my prime lens means I'm not going to keep remembering that button so often. It's only when I use my zoom lenses, so I'm more likely to forget what I've programmed it to. So that's just one too many, but you know, it's nice to have it there anyway. Well, if you found all that info useful then I do have an extended version of this video where I go into the more Olympus specific settings I have on this camera obviously useful if you're an Olympus user yourself and that's available to watch as part of my e6 subscription which is available on my website but you probably guessed I was going to say that anyway anyway I hope you found it all useful anyway uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video <laughs>